Hey guys, this is another one of these Dynabook C50 hedges. We had one of these before. Now, what the customer is telling me with this one is that it is not powering on and there was a spillage. Uh, there's no signs of a spillage here, but if I press the power button, as you know, with these modern laptops, the power button is actually on the keyboard itself. Whereas with the older ones, they would have maybe a button up here somewhere or a button over this side. It would be separate from the motherboard and you could test it because it just had a few pins itself. But when I press the button on this, nothing happens at all. So they've said to me there's a spill. So I'm going to start off by seeing if we have an issue with the keyboard because it certainly seems like that's the case. Now, because I know that there's a spill on this keyboard, I'm sure a lot of you are shouting at me, just replace the damn keyboard and stop making a video about it, stop going on and on about it. But <laughs> what I want to be sure of here is that the keyboard is the only fault. I don't know if the, how big the spill was, if there's possible damage to other components in it. So what I want to try and do here is take the back off this laptop and somehow jumper it and get the laptop to switch on so that I know that there's no other fault with it. If I can confirm that there's no fault with the motherboard or the screen and everything else works, then I'm happy to buy a keyboard. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the back off this and I'm gonna see if we can jumper it to get it on. Older style laptops like this Toshiba R5012BW had a keyboard here and a separate power button on its own little board. So when it came down to troubleshooting the power button with this type of board, you would simply take out this daughter board here. You would find a ground pin and set your multimeter to continuity. And you would find if the power button was working, if you press the power button here, you would get continuity on ground on one of these other wires. And then all you had to test really was just to make sure that there was 3.3 volts on one of these pins when you had the the power button back on and that was it tested fine with these new boards the power button is now here which is part of this entire keyboard here so there's going to be one ribbon cable that comes in underneath and we're going to somehow have to find out which of those many pins on that relate to the power button so that's what I'm going to try and do next I've taken the back off this laptop and it may look familiar to you because we've seen this model of laptop before in my series. I can't remember what was wrong with the other one, but this is the exact same model. So what I wanted to find out here was which one is the keyboard cable. So this one is the ribbon cable right here. Now, as I mentioned already, this keyboard cable now encompasses the power button also. So I'm presuming one of these 28 pins right here carries the signal from the power button onto the motherboard. But I have no indication as to what that was or what pins they are. Like there's 28 pins on this and I was hoping maybe that there was some indication on this ribbon cable telling me that, you know, this pin right here is for the power button. But it didn't, you know, there's no such, there's no such marking on the ribbon cable. So what I decided to do next was to check for volts DC. We know on the older style boards, on the power button, there's the 3.3 volt always on. So I want to see if I can find that 3.3 volt to see is it actually making its way down this ribbon cable to the power button. And maybe it's f essentially just functioning the same way as the power buttons on the older motherboards. So with my multimeter in volts DC in 20 volt range, I place my black probe to ground and very, very carefully, I'm going to zoom in a second so you can see it a bit closer, very, very carefully, I'm checking for volts DC at each one of these pins, okay? So I went along them one by one and what I found was that really only one of the pins carried any significant voltage at all and that was the pin right here. So I found 2.9 volts on this one. This is one, two, three, four from the end. So the question at this point is what to do next. I have 2.9 volts on this pin here, which I suspect is related to the power button. However, I don't have a schematic for this. We don't have schematics for Dynabooks or Toshibas, and I cannot confirm what that 2.9 volts is for. 
So my difficulty as well is that all of the new modern laptops are coming like this. There's a power button that's incorporated onto the keyboard. So at some stage I need to take a leap of faith and work out how these actually work as well. So what I decided to do was see what would happen when I jumpered that to ground. So I got my tweezers and I very, very carefully connected it to my 2.9 volt pin here on the connector and grounded it to the screw and when I did that it powered on so after it powered on I took my tweezers away flipped it over connected in a USB keyboard I successfully signed in I confirmed that the screen was fine all the ports was fine were fine the motherboard was fine so as the customer said it seemed like it was simply an issue that they'd spilled something on the keyboard and that had killed the keyboard so just to double confirm that that pin was for the power button I very carefully once again got my tweezers placed it on the pin and grounded it held it there for a few seconds and that switched the laptop off okay so now that we're able to get the laptop powered on I'm able to confirm that the only issue with this is the keyboard so I'm gonna order a new keyboard for that customer um, but it's quite interesting to see that the power button essentially works in the same way as it did when it was on a separate little board itself. Um, a lot of the laptops now are coming with the power button in as part of the main keyboard. So it's interesting just to see that we can get it to power on this in the same way that we could with the older power buttons. That's all I got for you this week, guys. Uh, hopefully that's been of some use. I've actually certainly certainly learned something today myself that is going to be useful going forward. Um, not much else in this week, but hopefully we'll have something interesting to work on next week, and I'll post it here. Please like and subscribe, and post any comments that you have below. Thanks.